Okay, hello everybody. Today's date is March 29th, 2015, and my name is Leslie Williams. Now, this video is going to be very interesting, and um, it's going to be one of those kind of videos, you know, where you have to uh, listen to every statement, because all statements uh, are going to be, it's like building a house, a brick home. Each brick at the foundation, okay, uh, is going to be laid out at the beginning, and then uh, the bricks that go on top of the foundation are going to help complete the, uh, the actual house. I'm going to have to make my statements creatively, read between the lines concerning who am I really talking about. Here we go. Now, organized stalking, organized stalking, gang stalking, target individuals. One target can be selected for multiple different criminal motivations. Some targets, I have read blogs online where some targets have been victims of this crime for 30 years. I literally read one person's target who stated that they've been a target of this crime for 60 years. And there's other additional information pertaining to how targets have been victims of this crime for their entire lives. So the only thing I, and you'll be able to discover this in a more, in, like when you go to, when you start researching at Google, the descriptions that I state in this video, like say if I say go to Google and type in the police and gang stalking, then you obviously know what to type in at Google. Now, as I continue to speak, you're going to hear other descriptions, not just the police. So, basically, hold on a second. Hold on a second. What I was leading up to is this, is that targets of gang stalking, in fact, I'm even going to backtrack for a second, stay with this video, you will be glad if you did. Right now, you can go to, I, I believe it's still on the internet, go to Google and type in Freedom Fighters for America, it's a website. And then once you get to that website, what you want to do, in fact, Chris Zucker, who is the uh, uh, creator of that website, he was the individual that I spoke with right before I left Michigan to go to Connecticut. And it was the reason why I went to Connecticut. And um, let's see, uh, I believe it was in between uh, October of 2010 and March of 2011, I sent him an email. And I stated, since I knew that uh, I was being gang stalked in that email, uh, inter uh, email interception, email account hacking is a methodology that the gang stalking perpetrators perpetrate against gang stalking targets. I wasn't sure that if he got my email that I was, uh, that I had sent him. So, what I did was he gives these types of radio shows on his website. And so I emailed him a second email stating that to confirm that you got my email, could you mention my name on one of your radio interviews? And he did. Now, this is when I started making contact with, I only make contact with two separate people. Uh, one was from Michigan, Ken Rhodes, and the other one was Chris Zucker by email. Now, so I don't know if Chris Zucker has got archive shows, but if you go back and listen to those shows, each show pertaining to those calendar months, you should hear him say, I got your contact information or I got your email, Miss Williams. As a result of the, the expedition escalating on a fever scale towards me in Michigan, I had to leave. Hold on. Hold on. So I went to Ken, and so what I did was I decided to uh, go try to meet Chris Zucker by looking up his address that was on his website and then Matt Quaston how to get there from Michigan in reference to what available transportation services would get me from Michigan to Connecticut and then how I would get to his house once I arrived in Connecticut. And the closest Amtrak Greyhound that would arrive in Ridgefield, Connecticut was uh, to Stamford, Connecticut. I was immediately, ga I was gang stalked on the bus routes getting there, literally. I took an Amtrak and then I took a, uh, no, actually I took an Amtrak and then I, uh, sorry, I, I've been to so many different <laughs> states trying to escape this criminal reality. It's interstate stalking is all over the internet. It can be researched and cross-talking to gang stalking. I took an Amtrak uh, to, uh, uh, to Connecticut and then took uh, Connecticut bus services and what I was going to do was try to connect with a Stanford Connecticut public transportation service to get me as close as I could 
to Ridgefield. And I had everything set up. I had uh, uh, transportation uh, routes picked out for everything. And I was immediate. I was gang stalked on my way from Amtrak to uh, Stanford, Connecticut. And the Amtrak train that I took was 50 feet behind the police department that was responsible for filing multiple falsified police reports uh, concerning me, uh, concerning the gang stalking of me in Michigan, literally. And since true bona fide real target individuals who are educated. Okay, know that we are stalked from state to state. We know that our all of our internet activity is surveilled, and I was looking up all transportation routes to getting back and forth uh, to get from Michigan to Connecticut. In fact, you can go to YouTube right now and type in "learning disabled woman exposes gang stalking in Yucca Valley." There's four videos. Pay attention, to, especially to the one that's 10 minutes long. The point being is that I looked up. I was going to see David Larson in Yucca Valley. He's he's experiencing a subcrime of gang stalking, which is implantation. I'll get back to the Chris Sucker website in a second. The point being is that is that uh, uh, I lost my train of thought. Just hold on one second. Uh, let's see what was I talking about? Okay, Chris Sucker, and then I went on to uh, oh Yucca Valley. Now I looked up. David Larson's address at UCSD Biomedical Library, SDSU Love Library, and the North University San Diego Public Library. I looked up all transportation services from getting from UCSD's address, because I was camping right up the street from UCSD, and David Larson's address. Then I looked up all transportation services getting to Yucca Valley, and then all of Yucca Valley's public transportation services in order to get to David Larson's address once I got there. And every single, every single place I went, including all transportation routes, I was gang stalked at in the same exact identical way that I've been gang stalked all over San Diego County. I, was, I went there for one week and then came back. The same exact identical verbal harassment that I endure in San Diego County since August 8, 2011 up to this date, March 29, 2015. It was just caught yesterday again at Ross, Los, uh, Ross Grocery Store off of La Jolla Village Plaza. Absolutely. It's been caught on hundreds and hundreds of audio files along all my routes every day. So, when you look at that Yucca Valley video and then go to YouTube and type in, uh, excuse me, and then type in learning disabled woman exposes flat out evidence of gang stalking. Learning disabled woman exposes, um, uh, uh, learning disabled woman uh, catches gang stalking caught in your face. Just play around with the words a little bit and you'll see that uh, you'll see at least two or three videos pertaining just to just that specific YouTube description in reference to its title. You'll see that the Yucca Valley gang stalking was identical to the uh, uh, La Jolla gang stalking. You know, the reason why I'm bringing all this up is I, the reason why I brought that up was I was trying to illustrate to you that La Jolla is 160 miles away from Yucca Valley. And the fact that I was looking up David Larson's address at these aforementioned uh, descriptions in reference to uh, libraries, SDSU, UCSD, and the North University of San Diego Public Library with the same exact identical gang stock and verbal harassment has been caught at all those places as well. Absolutely. Hold on. Mm. Sorry. Hold on, I dropped my cigarette. Oh, here it is. Okay, so I'm going to go take it out of my mouth and my it's stuck to my mouth. Okay, so anyways, now getting back to Freedom Fighters for America's website. Go to his website and type in and look it over. Once you bring it up, you want to lo look over to the left. And what you're going to notice is you're going to notice the features that state biomedical uh, implantation, uh, neural in implants, looking for anything that's got implants. And then once you click on these features and they come up, uh, what you're going to look for is you're going to look for a, what was his name? Um, it had to do with a child who was implanted with neural implants in Canada under the guise of epilepsy. His name escapes me, but trust me, you'll find him. Uh, you're going to look for the uh, implants. They're metallic implants, and they, there, was a, there, there was at least 10 of them that were uh, caught in x-rays in his head. I'll probably remember the name as I continue to talk. Hold on. Now, this had to do with a young boy in Canada back in the 70s. Now, go to Google right now and type in Oakwood Hospital, Deer Warren, Michigan. Okay, doctor caught falsely diagnosing children with epilepsy and implanting them. The Benner Law Firm took that lawsuit. It was a class action lawsuit. Now, the gang stalking of women that I noticed 
in Dearborn, Michigan, in Michigan, were being shipped to the same exact hospital and they were being gang stalked. And the people that were connected to their gang stalking were the same exact women that were connected to the gang stalking of me. Do I have any, well let me, I, I'm not gonna say any more concerning that specific subject matter at this time, but let me just put it to you this way. I went to the Benner Law Firm and within a week and a half I was evicted from my, my hiking area. which is right across the street from the university where I, was, where, I, where, I, where I had just caught massive gang stalking on video within a week of that as well. U of M. Fellow American citizens, fellow San Diegoans, my name is Elsie Williams. What was the purpose of this video? Go to YouTube and Google and type in remote neural monitoring. Okay. Now, remote neural monitoring monitors you neurally from a remote distance and it is now being strongly suggested by researchers journalists okay and independent uh, uh, and targeted individuals that it the technology that is used and back in the day it used to be neural implants and BCI and, and uh, TCI implants that were needed in order for remote technology to interface with the brain uh, stimulated responsive implants, BCI implants, uh, EMG implants, you name it. Now it's being strong, and now that nanotechnology like nanobots, nanodots, uh, even smart dust, it is being strongly suggested that neural implants are not even no longer uh, needed, even though they are still being used. Now, to assist in the remote neural monitoring of the targeted individual. Now, when you go to Google and type in remote neural monitoring, you're going to come up with several different PDF files uh, and blogs concerning what remote neural monitoring is. My my suggestion is go to Google and type in John St. Aquilera uh, space NSA lawsuit remote neural monitoring. That's the best. That's the that's the first one you want to start with. In this in this PDF link in this uh, it's an attached PDF link. Whatever it'll it'll come up. Trust me. What you're going to see is that brain stimulation is a mechanism, it's a feature of remote neural monitoring. Remote neural monitoring can literally monitor, not only monitor you neurally remotely in order to be able to monitor the brain states, monitor physiological signals that the brain is reading, monitor uh, emotional clusters, EEG signatures, but it can also monitor memories. It can monitor the video cortex and the audio cortex. Now, when we experience a memory, like say, let me just give you an example. Hold on one second. If you ever saw that old movie back in the 80s, Top Gun, and Tom Cruise is sitting with Kelly McGillis, they're sitting in her house, and she's playing that movie, sitting on the dock of the bay, and uh, Tom Cruise is standing there with his beer in his hand, and, and he's like, you can tell he's thinking about something. You can tell he's remembering something. Kelly McGillis goes, uh, an old friend, and then Tom Cruise says, my mother used to listen to this song all the time. And he was thinking about his mother. I want you to listen to me. Okay? Yeah. Remote neural monitoring monit can also monitor any neural network, n any neural pathway that is, that is connected to memory. And memory is associated to the video cortex. When you hear a song or you see an item that's related to an event, that was related to an intimate relationship, you're going to have a memory. You can close your eyes right now and say, think to yourself, okay, what did I do on July 4th, whatever, whatever year? What did I do the day I got married? Uh, what was I literally doing the second before my husband kissed me as we exchanged our wedding vows? What wedding dress, what did I look like in my wedding dress? That's what I'm talking about. If you close your eyes and you think of something, the day your child was born, you're going to see vague, vaguely pictorial representations of, this, of, the, uh, uh, of the visual memory of that event. The visual cortex, when you're watching a movie, a TV show, when you're looking at reality in front of you, you're seeing it through your optical nerves and that information is sent to your video cortex and you're experiencing that information in real time. When you experience a memory, it's the same thing. It's just not as clear. Now, these memories are stored in neural pathways that are associated to neural networks. With remote neural monitoring, they can view what is in any neural pathway on their monitor, literally. Just like in that movie, Paycheck. 
Why is Paycheck? Okay, and there was another movie with Denzel Washington, but I'm not going to uh, hit on that one right now because I, I, uh, I forgot the name of it for one. But if you look at the movie Paycheck, he's sitting in a chair and his brain is literally being, they're literally watching his memories. Now, fellow American citizens, I want you to listen to me and listen to me carefully. With remote neural monitoring, they can literally, they can literally, even when you're awake, at the unconscious, uh, they can access your memories while you're conscious because most of your memories are at the subconscious and unconscious level. We have different modes of consciousness, unconscious, subconscious, pre-conscious, and conscious. We also had the ego and then the superego and then other uh, analytical uh, processes that can uh, uh, process information. The point being is this, remote neural monitoring is a factual reality, brain stimulation is attached to it, and they can stimulate memories. In fact, go to Google right now and type in brainwave frequency list, and you're going to come up with quite a few of lists of different, of, of, on, on different websites showing what brainwave frequencies are associated to specific symptom, uh, um, symptomologies that are associated to post-traumatic stress, alcoholism, drug addiction. Okay? So, fellow American citizens, if, say if you have a traumatic memory, post-traumatic stress, I'd say your mother, because uh, a lot of parents of, tar of, of target individuals were also targeted. Okay, and that is possibly one of the reasons why the children were targeted. Okay, because if the parents were targeted, they either knew something, knew somebody, saw something, or participated in something unwittingly or intentionally, military or not, or they were just selected because of their blood type, whatever reason. So if the if they're like say testing this technology back in the 70s and they were neurally influencing the parent of a target or both parents or the whole entire family which is what they do make no mistake about this it's all over the internet targeted individuals are talking about how their siblings okay are being neurally influenced you can go to uh amazon right now and type in electronic torture electronic rape technology and gang stalking at the post office that's a postal worker wrote a book about how she's being gang stalked by fellow employees at work and about how even her parents are being neurally influenced. And if you buy that book, excuse me, you're gonna realize you're gonna you're gonna read things in the internet that sound totally bizarre. They're not. You just don't know enough yet concerning what we know. Non-consensual military human experimentation experimentation has been going on since at least the 40s when the Nazi scientists were brought over here, Project Paperclip. And you can go to Google right now and type in gang stalking and Project Paperclip and see that thousands of targets all over the internet exposing the same exact factual realities that I am and every other targeted individual who is educated enough to know that these things are part, can be part. I have to say things carefully. Remember I said at the beginning of this video, read between the lines. The point being is that if you're educated enough, even if you're not like say if you're a victim of gang stalking, but you're not a victim of non-consensual human experimentation, there's an extreme likelihood you're being remotely nearly monitored. Because the perpetrators who are connected to these crimes want to make sure that you are monitored in real time at all times to make sure that anything you process, think, is not a threat to them because they know the target is going to be thinking about them because of what is happening to the target by them. Think about that. Now, remote neural monitoring is a very powerful tool. So is the neural phone. The point being is that remote neural monitoring, when you look at the brainwave frequency list, you're gonna see post-traumatic stress being one of, post-traumatic stress has to do with the memory. It's got to do with certain specific brain states that will fire when the memories are experienced. And all of these different brain states are part of the neural network that is attached to the traumatic memories. Are people that have post-traumatic stress being neurally stimulated to re-experience these memories by these filthy red ass whores? Are veterans being gang stalked? I made that video for the sake of my, for the sake of the veterans out there that are experiencing these horrific criminalities without a dime in their pocket because they've been blacklisted from employment covertly and sabotaged financially so they cannot exist.
That is the de that is just one depth of these filthy criminal right ass whores that are that are perpetrating these criminalities, and it's done to put some of them in institutions because of possibly what they uh, seen or did in war theaters, or because of their skills. Payback time, motherfuckers. Excuse my language, but I am a I am a very devout activist for vets. That's right, because I know that they went and risked their lives for us, no matter if they were lied to about why they were going over there or not. That's a hero. So, alcoholism and drug addiction can also be stimulated, so the person will drink and or, if they're using whatever, will relapse. How many children have lost their parents based on the, these kinds of things? Does the courts make money off these kinds of things? Getting back to my the theme of my particular video. If a particular individual knows, witnessed before their eyes as a child. See, when you're growing up with your parents, you, you kind of learn how your parents are. How they act when they're angry, how they act when they're happy, how they act when they're down, how they act when they're just being themselves, and so on and so forth. Over time, at least by the time of, like, say, 9, 10, 11, 12, the child is really becoming consciously aware of what type of parents their parents are. Okay? They're able to, you know, take it in. They're able to, you know, think about it, you know. And as they get older, they're going to really know what to, how, how their parents are. Okay? The point being is that if you, say if you got a, say if you got a, a, a mother who seems to be uh, mad a lot, angry a lot, even at times possibly raging. Is that your mother really doing that? Or is that remote neural monitoring stimulating it? This technology can also stimulate depression, anxiety, panic attacks, manic behavior. Absolutely. Yeah. Are the pharmaceutical companies connected to these organized crime groups? cause a panic attack, what's the woman gonna do? Is she gonna run to the doctor? Boom. Anyways, the point being, say one day you're sitting in a counter in your kitchen and all of a sudden your dad gets up and his eyes are off in a way that you've never seen before. It does not look natural at all. Okay? And he takes your older sister and he flips her in the kitchen and then he starts to go after your younger brother and the child who's witnessing this runs out the door and goes get her mom, okay, who's the wife of the, of, the, of the father. She's in the backyard. She comes in and she says, I don't care what you do to me, but you will not hurt my kids. If that wife has ever experienced brutal attacks of her by him, were all these things engineered through remote neural monitoring? If your mother got to the point to where she was even possibly suicidal and came very close to possibly committing suicide or threatening to do so, was her brain being stimulated? And are these children witnessing this as it's occurring? Of course, because they're in the house as it's occurring. Now these children seeing this, hearing it, seeing it with their eyes, this becomes a memory. Now, can this technology be used to get the parent both of them or any either one of them and the siblings to abuse one of their kids siblings sister or brother parents their kids absolutely i already know it for a fact because this technology can experience rage it can stimulate the get up and go response and combined with voice morphine and the microwave hearing effect being used on the same target the target can literally be neurally controlled to beat his wife literally or their kids literally now, I already know I'm going to experience a payback from making this video. I'll either be arrested or assaulted or I'll end up missing or put in jail. Right? Absolutely. Over time, I will. Either right away or in a month or two, whatever. But this video is worth being made. So, if the child who now has grown up, okay, decided to disconnect themselves from their parents because their parents are still being neurally influenced. See, because isolation is a method of gang stalking. If they're like, like say, whoever they're targeting, they're isolating. That means they also want the target individual to be isolated from the parents. So, if the parents are already being neurally, uh, neurally stimulated to engage in inappropriate behaviors towards the child, do you honestly believe that that child, okay, feels safe? 
No, they're going to disconnect from those parents. They're going to keep their distance. Whether they're aware that what's happening is, is being managed and steered by a third party or not. But, remember this. The, the child has now become a victim of gang stalking. They're being brutally assaulted, they've been made homeless, their finances are being targeted. My finances are being targeted right now, Social Security. I'm predicting right now they're going to ban me from Social Security offices and also or take me up Social Security and while I'm trying to appeal for it, I'll be banned from the offices because that way I can't re uh, uh, appeal it. Absolutely. Financial destitution is all over the internet because it's how they control the targets. It's how they can control them physically where they end up at once the homelessness is created or before. Absolutely. People with no money have few options, and they know it. Now, let's get back to the what I was talking about. Hang on. If this video stops while I'm in the middle of talking, it's because the battery ran out. I, put, I thought I put new batteries in this camera. The point being is that if the child is made, who's now an adult has made a decision to not talk to their parents no more and is alone, just came home safe from a very harass a day of non-stop harassment along all their routes. They could, they're coming home to an environment they're afraid they're going to get evicted from or arrested because they're camping and they're tired. Okay, They're tired mentally, they're tired emotionally, they live in a constant state of fear. Is my money going to be taken away? Am I going to get caught camping? I'm not saying I'm talking about me and I'm not saying I'm not. And then all of a sudden when they get home and they're deflating from all this anxiety, approaching a new area, that's uh, another area, Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a stimulating another type of anxiety, fear of being caught camping. And then all of a sudden they start having these pictorial images of what their mother did when they were 11, 10. When they have a stimulated memory of what their father did while they're living in the extreme effects of being currently gang stalked, while being emotionally drained, these, these filthy red ass animals will harass you to the point of complete mental deterioration. Absolutely. So, go to Google right now and type in Clyde Lewis Ground Zero Show 91713. Okay? I was on that show. He even talked about brain stimulation and being stimulated without you even knowing about it. The point being is this. Why would they do this? Would it be to get that child to call the parents? Because the parents are being coerced, coached, or neurally influenced, or have been indoctrinated into these gang stalking groups, or a mixture of any of them. And why would they do this? To tape record the call? So go to Google and type in Clyde Lewis Ground Zero. 9-17-13, which is the date of the show I want you to, uh, it's called The uh, Away Team. I was on that show that night. Fellow American citizens, I made this video to inform, to expose the truth and to save lives. In closing, I don't know when it was, I think it was in the past year and a half, I saw an uh, article online of a little boy who was locked in his closet day after day after day after day after day and he finally died because his parents were too busy using drugs. A little boy, three years old. So go to Google and type in brainwave frequency list until you find the one that's got the fact that frequencies associated to drug addiction are online. Stimulation, stimulating neural pathways to relapse for money. I do what I do to inform to expose the truth. My name is Ossie Williams. I am a target victim and activist concerning the crimes of what is known as gang stalking. Gang stalking targets are tortured in real time. They are mentally harassed every day in one form or another. I'm being gang stalked at UCSD La Jolla campus, Ross Grocery Store off of La Jolla Village Square, and they will come up with a normal appearing event to arrest me for illegal lodging, camping, and they're the ones who made me homeless. How was I gang stalked from Michigan to Connecticut to San Diego? Okay, I do appreciate listening. Research what I stated. I made this video in the name of that sweet, precious child that died and veterans. Thank you for listening, everybody, and have a nice day.